Welcome everyone to today's video. How are you doing? I hope you're doing fine. We certainly are as we have the legendary Octane out here in the office. As the likewise legendary German Chaos Computer Club Congress is currently going on. I took one of those hoodies out to have a matching theme here. Vintage as the Octane from a decade ago. So what we want to do today is first of all here's a light. In case you missed it I recently had a live stream here soldering LEDs into the light bar because this light bar was broken so now we have here some nice blue LEDs in there instead of nothing. On the origin I also noticed that with this octane patches the serial ports were not working otherwise it was still booting fine. These are all the many things developers need to test and take care of and these are this kind of things we want to document here also and all of the things are often not things you solve in one day. Actually it is another day I also need to emerge as a nicer window manager. Interestingly it says here the same as on the origin. Serial 8250-16550 and then also IOC3. So chances are this is similar broken. Indeed this serial did not expect this and this could mean that this IOC3 stuff not sure if this always was broken or got broken by other people in the last decade. Rediffing stuff here, rebasing stuff. Dty as actually we have here four ports. Interesting. Yeah, we need to test them. Also, I wanted to update this slightly. We had here. This is the data center. But did I already emerge a display or maybe not? To have a nice background picture here. Maybe another day. Just came to the office. Time for some morning coffee. We have here this NT2 I created here just for the Octane, this package MIPS Linux IP30. Maybe I move this also like I've done for the P3 here to a overlay for MIPS. Although of course it doesn't apply to other MIPS boards like this high performance Octane or something. But nonetheless as an example I could move it over here into architecture MIPS64 package. Linux as an overlay to not have it as Linux IP30 but just a overlay for MIP64. I tried the other week to rebase this patch set and these are quite some patches as you see here for the Octane support. At one point I merged with gentle ones but these are more fixed up um, audios working and some other detail also I think. These are similar many patches as P3 and in a way it's even more than P3 because the P3 was only tweaking stuff and this is actually adding whole platform support. So some of these patches are huge and they even and they even named Mega so IP27 Mega update here. So yeah Octane patches also 135k. So rebasing or rediffing means when we just update the Linux kernel to this is right now 4.12 here 4.12 so when we just update this to 4.13, all the patches will no longer apply. So we need to go over all of these patches and remerge them, rediff them, in other words, rebase them for the changes made in the kernel in the meantime. And the problem is, as you see, some of them are huge. While often these changes are trivial and you just move some code around, sometimes it's also API changes and code refactoring and then it's not so trivial to factor all these patches in there. So for today, so just as a quick test, in the meantime to motivate me here, have some fun with the MIPS and entertain you guys. I updated this from LIPS MIPS 4.12 2.8, so hopefully with some bug and security fixes. So it compiled already, it is committed, so we will quickly copy it over, test boot it here and shortly plug something into the serial console and see what is happening there. To better share this with the audience with a MIPS Octane at home, I first remove the old package here, RF this root here Linux IP30 rebuild it because then I have a clean package without any other old files in there to share with you guys because we have already some people who installed this Octane dump from me at home and we obviously want to continue with this maybe eventually we will also get a VPro graphic or a faster Octane to work even more efficiently on all this Linux support stuff in case you want to see more I have also earlier done hardware cursor so in the decade old and upstream code this was software cursor with, which means that this area of the cursor always needs to be saved and repainted and with a hardware cursor of course we save a lot of load 
just moving the mouse around here was some 5% load or so, even more when the graphic is updating underneath. So you can watch the previous videos for this. The only thing left here is the color map change that I have not yet figured out how to get the values in there. Interestingly enough, I have black box installed here, just no fonts. And if you install the Octane dump at home, keep in mind that you can emerge everything here from source. I will not release binary packages of everything, you can just emerge stuff here from source like this. And by the way, if you do not yet have an Octane and think it looks cool, my recommendation do not go out and spend big money on this, because in today's competitive level of computing power they are not that outstanding fast after two decades. So if you get one of those from your friends, parents or neighbors, that's nice and awesome, but better not spend hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars on these, you will likely be disappointed unless you are a collector and want it for the looks in the living room. So somehow the colors changed a little bit, not sure if that is just the VGA connection or I hope nothing is getting defect in my precious impact there. Or if it's just my mouse cursor poking that eventually, because I try already to program there's a color map, maybe that eventually did something after poking there a hundred times the registers in the card, so hmm, whatever. So right now we are running 4.12.0 and we don't have another kernel there. So let's install here mine install force verbose, what we just copied over here, which is this one and that may take shortly as this is only 250 megahertz. Oh, it's quite idle actually. What are we waiting so long for SCSI I.O. Output error. Hmm. This I never had so far. No, something apparently broke. Hmm. Pity. So much to doing all this development and testing. With the reset the colors look pretty okay, so maybe that was indeed my register poking, at least some at least some temporary glitch, if not related to my color map register poking. So maybe it's mostly a timing issue that my color map reprogramming doesn't work. But this is not the easiest thing to work against this non-existing documentation and reverse engineering of this IRX Unix stuff that few people have. So second time it worked here on the terminal, whatever that was. But this is what we are doing the YouTube videos for, to allow for further development of this. Then maybe we just added this to 14.12.8 disk, I guess. I expect this to work also. Eventually we could improve the boot loader there. 14.12.8 dist. Also the newer builds have this nicer status indicator so that in the meantime I like more. Hmm. And it's not booting anymore. No descriptor for this range font if I cannot be loaded into current memory map. Hmm. It actually could be that I had an IP27 config and this is an IP27 kernel. Problem is this power brick here does not start all old SCSI hard drives. Let's see if that works today or not. Hmm. So light is on, maybe that is just delayed start. Let's see. Actually, today I could have left the font larger for you to read. So it is some drive connected. Unit not ready, unit not ready. What is SD param start? Or was it command? Ah, oh, no, it's spinning up. Lucky us. But not very. That is when your power is shitty. Poor Scarzi hard drive should power supply. Oh, the play for this, not to kill you some old SCSI hard drives. Bloody shit. Let's hope we can just mount this SD because I recently learned if this has, uh, I recently learned in this other video that XFS cannot be mounted with a dirty journal with the endiness is different. So SDB. Or we reset the SCSI adapter thing now that the drive wasn't ready when we plugged it first in. Now it works. Lucky us. 
SD. So you do not want to buy the cheapest power supply stuff for working with this vintage stuff because power draw. And which is here which? Maybe we do we discard this? No, this is this type it does maybe not understand this Irix label. Let's just mount this. Once that worked, then the journal was also clean. And then we also added the ArcCF for the old kernel was zero red one. We could directly unpack the kernel, but I'd rather not do so much with this fragile power supply and adapter thing. I know you can have multiple configurations in this arc load, but it's not the most convenient. So in the future we really should hack on this as well. Let's put the nice skin back on so that it looks nicer. So this is how a 10 minute task runs into a one hour YouTube video production. Not only all this video overhead and making mistakes and getting adapters out and things like this. I hope you enjoy this entertainment and, and don't forget to share, like and subscribe because I hope to see you soon for the next tinkering to come. Actually now with this reboot the colors here are more normal again so for sure my color map for the cursor register poking is doing at least a little bit random hiccup and so let's test again mine install that and this time maybe we change this and copy maybe no such file what oh, we have no GPM what hmm. oh, maybe this didn't build just read it in again read arc and then we call this new and boot here I Test. and I hope that is the syntax. Not sure if there belongs a semicolon or not. Let's just test it then. So new 4.12.8. Let's see what happens. Uh, this is also the reset and then the reset and the keyboard doesn't come back up. At least it's still loaded, means this arc CF cannot be too wrong. Let's see, do we have keyboard on this reboot or what's it? We fully need to switch it off and on again. Ah, we have keyboard. So then set env os load file name new os load file name new boot no it still doesn't boot this hmm. somehow sometimes when you make videos everything goes wrong I think I simply have not installed the last right kernel here because it still had IP27 in the config or well, also has IP27 early print K um, because I had the two builds Let's see if we have no IP30, no, this is IP27. Let's just rebuild and repack and recopy and see what happens. Whatever we were copying before, let's start fresh. So that finished. Let's recopy, let's delete. And we have IP30 finally, whatever I copied earlier. Maybe, maybe the IP27 has another load address or something that this fails immediately while loading. In general, I would prefer if we would have more MIPS series working in one kernel. Maybe I look into this at least for the IP27, IP30 or so. That would of course be very helpful to have 
one kernel for two or three of those. So we still need to reset this environment variable unless I figure out if ArcLoad has some configuration name selection there and something is happening. Maybe that is yeah, that works. So 4.12.8 but we do not get a more booting system. Hmm. So much to just quickly upgrading the minor kernel version there quickly. Yeah, this is a time-consuming work of maintaining such a Linux architecture support thing. I like this thick blue light though. Let's see. Hmm. That indeed boots. Then something in between broke our Octane support, although the patches apply. What a pity. Now you could just test boot each of them. That takes maybe an hour compiling this on a relatively epic data center server. We could read the patch between those Linux MIPS versions. So your mileage may vary and don't forget to share, like and subscribe to follow with this awesome tinkering series. At least we have some success in the middle. So 4.12.4 still boots. You see here compiled just now after the other ones. And here, then we can test the next one in between and see what is the last change that broke this. But I will continue testing this off camera after I publish this video.